Good evening. This is Akashvani. I am Valsa Williams with the news at 9. The headlines. Union Home Minister Amit Shah chairs a high-level meeting to review overall preparedness for flood management in the coming monsoon. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to flag off Goa's first Vande Bharat Express train tomorrow. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says government has made transformative changes in the defence sector by promoting self-reliance. Karnataka cabinet announces to implement all five poll guarantees during this financial year. In badminton, Indian shuttler Lakshya Sen enters semi-finals of Thailand Open 2023. Union Home Minister Amit Shah today chaired a high-level meeting in New Delhi to review overall preparedness for flood management in the context of the upcoming monsoon season. He also reviewed the long-term measures for formulation of a comprehensive and overarching policy to mitigate the perennial flood problems of the country. Mr. Shah said efforts are being made in the field of disaster management to help minimize the loss of lives and livelihoods during disasters. He said five days rain and flood forecast currently being given by the Indian Meteorological Department and Central Water Commission will be expanded to 7 days forecast by next monsoon season so that flood management can be further improved Mr Shah directed the officials to continue to strengthen coordination between the central and state agencies to have a permanent system for forecasting of floods and rise in water levels in major catchment zones and areas of the country Prime Minister Narendra Modi will flag off Goa's first Vande Bharat Express train from Madgaon railway station tomorrow through video conferencing. The state of the art Vande Bharat Express will improve connectivity between Mumbai and Goa. The train will operate between Mumbai's Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj terminus and Goa's Madgaon station. The train will cover the journey in 7 and a half hours which will help save about 1 hour of journey time compared with the current fastest train connecting the two places. The indigenously made train equipped with world class amenities and advanced safety features including covered technology will also boost tourism in both states. Union minister and BJP leader Shwini Vaishnav said India has made great strides in every sector in the past 9 years and the country has undergone a big transformation briefing the media in new delhi today mr vaishnav highlighted the achievements made in the railways and telecom sector mentioning that india will become the third largest economy in the world by 2027-28 Pointing towards the achievements made in the railways and telecom sector, the minister said railways has witnessed transformative changes in the past nine years. A two-day-long Chintan Shivir was organized in New Delhi by the Railways Ministry. The objective of the Chintan Shivir centered on preparing an action plan to implement Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision 2047. Speaking on the occasion, Railways Minister Ashwini Vaishnav emphasized on rail safety and adoption of newer technologies. He also stressed upon the railways' role in Indian economic growth. Mr. Reshnav urged officers to devise a method to cater to over 1000 crore passengers annually. He also urged officers to adopt new technology and adopt the lessons learned from the ongoing bullet train project. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has said the government has made transformative changes in the defence sector by promoting self-reliance. Addressing an event in New Delhi today he said the government has emphasized on manufacturing state of the art weapons for the use of the Indian forces he said the country's domestic defense production has crossed the 1 lakh crore rupee mark recently Mr Rajnath Singh said a strong military not only secures the borders but also protects the culture and economy of a country the minister said the government is working to build a developed india by the year 2047 by focusing on all sectors of the country Mr Singh how to the measures taken in the field of economy defense education governance and women's empowerment the karnataka state cabinet has announced to implement all the five poll guarantees during this financial year 
Briefing media after the cabinet meeting today, Chief Minister Siddharamaiya gave details on the guarantees. Gruha Jyoti guarantee that ensures 200 units free electricity will be applicable from the August electricity bill. Gruha Lakshmi that guarantees 2,000 rupees every month to the woman head of a household will start from the 15th of August. The third guarantee of Annabhagya will come into force from the 1st of July under which 10 kilograms of food grains will be distributed to BPL and until they are card holders. The fourth guarantee, called Shakti, will come into force from the 11th of July when free bus travel will be available to women passengers. The fifth guarantee of Uranidhi, that will give 3,000 rupees to the unemployed graduates and 1,500 rupees to diploma holders for 24 months, will be implemented as and when the beneficiaries submit their application. More from our correspondent. As promised, the Congress government has taken a cabinet decision to implement five guarantees. However, it has said that these will be subject to conditions. Under Griha Jyoti, annual average of electricity usage will be taken into account and if the average crosses 200 units, one has to pay the electricity bill. Under Griha Lakshmi, Aadhaar and bank account number has to be submitted and it will be subject to verification by the government department. Under Shakti free bus travel, AC and luxury buses are exempted from this benefit. Benefit. The free travel benefit in the public corporation buses will be restricted to the travel within the state. Former Chief Minister Basavaraj Bommai has said that the announcements made today by Chief Minister are marked by ambiguity. Sudhindra Akashwani News, Bengaluru. Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan today released the UGC Regulations 2023 in New Delhi. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Pradhan said that these regulations will facilitate creation of many more quality-focused, deemed to be universities, in an objective and transparent manner. He said the new simplified guidelines will encourage universities to focus on quality and excellence. This will also strengthen the research ecosystem and have a long-term impact in transforming the higher education landscape. The minister complimented the UGC for this timely reform aligned with the National Education Policy 2020. The government today convened a second meeting with leading oil producers association to discuss a further cut in edible oil prices amidst fall in global prices. Secretary, Department of Food and Public Distribution, Sanjeev Chopra, chaired the meeting in New Delhi. During the meeting, the industry informed that the global prices of different edible oils have fallen by 150 to $200 per tonne in the last two months. The industry informed that prices have been reduced and will be further reduced shortly. The government has said that the sowing area of pulses and coarse cereals has increased this year as compared to last year. The Union Agriculture Ministry today released data on the progress of area coverage under summer crops. The sowing area of pulses stood at 19,86,000 hectares so far against around 19 lakh hectares last year. The sowing area of coarse cereals has also increased from 11,73,000 hectares to 12,10,000 hectares. On the other hand, the sowing area of rice has decreased from 30,33,000 hectares to 28,51,000 hectares. The overall sowing of summer crops is marginally down at 70,74,000 hectares this year as against over 72 lakh hectares during the same period last year. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. As the NDA government has completed nine years in office, Akashwani News brings a series of special stories on the initiatives taken by the government. Today, we take a look at the Department of Science and Technology's unique program, Vigyan Jyoti, for meritorious girls, with the aim to address the under-representation of women in different fields of science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM, in the country. We have a report. IIT Bombay recently organized a week-long program for 160 girls from rural parts of Maharashtra, Bihar and Odisha. During this, girls interacted with women inspirers, tried various experiments on break-make program kits developed by IIT Bombay. They also experienced virtual reality on VR sets. Convener of this program, Professor Rajesh Jele, shared more about this with Akashwani. If you look at the various inspirers, we went all the way from a farmer to a Air Force pilot to all the way to neurosurgeon. So these were truly inspiring stories. In the afternoon, the girls were doing a lot of hands-on activities where we started with a light bulb and then we slowly built their own FM radio and then a robot and also they were able to construct their own drone with their own hands and then fly the drones. 
all the kits used by the girls are provided to the parent school so that the girls can create local impact to ensure long term success of this program iit bombay students will mentor and follow up with these girls virtually jivan bhav sar akashvani news mumbai president draupadi murmu will be on a state visit to suriname and serbia from the 4th to the 9th of june During the first leg of her visit the president will visit Suriname from the 4th to the 6th of June this will be her maiden state visit after assuming the office of the president briefing media mr saurabh kumar secretary east ministry of external affairs said the visit assumes historical significance as president murmu will be the chief guest at the 150th anniversary celebrations of the arrival of indians in suriname the anniversary will be celebrated on the 5th of june Talking about the India-Suriname bilateral relations, Mr. Kumar said the two nations enjoy warm and friendly relations. India-Suriname relations are warm and friendly and acquire special significance on account of Indian diaspora, which is over 27% of the Suriname population. Our bilateral relations span sectors such as trade and commerce, development partnership, capacity building, agriculture, and people-to-people ties. Suriname has been supportive of India in the international forum. News just in the Shalimar Chennai Central Coromandel express train collided with a goods train near Abahanaga station in Odisha's Baleswar this evening. Many are feared critically injured in the accident. Rescue operations have been launched. and the injured are being shifted to Baleswar hospital the odisha odisha released an emergency control room number 6782262286 for information and help relating to the mishap the ndrf are on their way to the spot to carry out rescue operations more details are awaited India has expressed hope that Chinese authorities will facilitate the continued presence of Indian journalists working and reporting from China. External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bagchi said in New Delhi that the two sides continue to remain in touch regarding this issue. All foreign journalists including Chinese journalists have been pursuing journalist activities in India without any limitations or difficulties in reporting or in doing their media coverage. Meanwhile, Indian journalists in China have been operating with certain difficulties such as not being permitted to hire locals as correspondents or as journalists we would hope that chinese authorities facilitate the continued presence of indian journalists in working and reporting from china the external affairs ministry has also said that the forthcoming summit of the shanghai cooperation organization sco council of heads of state will be held on the 4th of next month in a virtual format mea spokesperson said preparations for the successful organization and holding of the summit are underway mr bakshi said india is confident that the summit will produce notable outcomes The foreign ministers of the BRICS countries have encouraged the use of local currencies in international trade, saying that the world economy has been complicated by sanctions and boycotts. In a joint statement issued today in the foreign ministers meeting in Cape Town, the ministers covered a range of tro- topics from international trade to peace resolutions for the Ukraine conflict. In Thailand Open badminton in men's quarterfinal Indian Shatla Lakshya Sen defeated Malaysia's Jun Hao Leong 21-19 21-11 to enter the semi-finals of the Thailand Open 2023 earlier in another quarterfinal match Indian Shatla Kiran George was defeated by French player Thomas Popov 16-21 17-21 The Intermeteorological Department IMD has said heat wave is likely to continue over Bihar, West Bengal and Sikkim today. It will continue till the 6th of this month. In Madhya Maharashtra and Vidarbh region heat wave will continue for the next 2 to 3 days. Hot and humid weather conditions may occur in Andhra Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. IMD said hail storm may occur in different parts of Uttarakhand today. It said heavy rainfall is expected in Kerala and Andaman Nicobar Islands from tomorrow till the 5th of this month. And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Union Home Minister Amit Shah chairs high level meeting to review overall preparedness for flood management in coming monsoon Prime Minister Narendra Modi to flag off Goa's first Vande Bharat Express train tomorrow Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says government has made transformative changes in the defence sector by promoting self reliance Karnataka cabinet announces to implement all five pole guarantees during this financial year 
In badminton, Indian shuttler Lakshya Sen enters semi-finals of Thailand Open 2023. That is all in the news at 9. Good night.